My name is Dr. Nayara Velart, and my mission is to find out how we can engage visual thinkers on the autism spectrum. The types of interventions that I propose to achieve this are facilitated using digital arts in expressive arts therapy to improve communication skills as well as cognitive, technical and social capabilities. Let's begin looking at some key themes. Firstly, the specific focus on visual thinkers as opposed to other types of thinkers, not verbal thinkers, not mathematical, not musical, visual. Secondly, I'm specifically targeting autism spectrum disorder as opposed to other neurodevelopmental conditions that use expressive arts therapy as a form of treatment. I also focus on the use of digital arts tools in therapy. And finally, developing specific life skills, such as emotional intelligence and employable capabilities. So what is a visual thinker? Dr. Temple Granding, prominent autism author and speaker, is on the spectrum herself. She explains it well from a personal perspective. I think in pictures, I don't think in language. So what is thinking in pictures? It's literally movies in your head. My mind works like Google Images. This can make verbal communication a challenge for visual thinkers who live in a language-dominated world. Why working with autism? Autism spectrum disorder is a neurodevelopmental condition that affects around 1-2% to of the global population. It has a significant but differentiated impact on social functioning, the use of language, interests, behavior patterns, levels of social isolation, and in this way, an ability to live a meaningful life. Autism is considered a spectrum disorder, a very big continuum that goes from very severe, the child remains non-verbal, to brilliant scientists and engineers. My experience tells me that expressive arts therapy can allow strengths to manifest when prioritizing communication through non-verbal means. The main purpose of my practice is to help those on the spectrum cut through their burden of isolation and improve their quality of life. This can be achieved by exploring new resources and communication techniques with practical teaching approaches. Why digital arts interventions? Many autistic children seem spatially and visually gifted and naturally motivated to work with computers. As a multimedia artist and therapist, I wanted to see whether novel digital interventions can improve their health, well-being and social functioning. Ultimately, could these methods provide a creative outlet and possibly a life skill for ASD visual thinkers? The goal is to improve social and cognitive function in people with autism or for those that are gifted in the multimedia work, helping them find a career path in creative industries. With support, these young visual thinkers could become experts, making a real contribution to society. My approach relies on the power of the arts to help autistic individuals thrive. My research provides solid insights into how using digital tools in therapy can make a positive change in ASD lives. Drawing on the principles of arts-based research, a range of digital media including digital painting, video editing, 3D graphics and animation were used across case studies with adolescents on the spectrum. The key is to leverage the relational aspect of the creative process to yield insights into the participants. And it gives rise to many of the most interesting therapeutic experiences like using co-creation of artwork with autistic visual thinkers to achieve therapeutic and skill-related goals. In this sense, both the client and the therapist engage in the creative process, influencing each other's artwork in a back-and-forth visual dialogue. This is approached through the lens of photography, which means adopting multiple roles of artist, researcher, therapist and teacher. These often complement and contrast each other, enriching the process. A critical aspect here is personalization. Therapeutic experiences must be tailored to specific learning needs and goals. It's about building creative projects that target each individual's passions and affinities to harness their intrinsic motivations and so 
enriching their world and improving their life. For example, Irene is passionate about Japanese manga illustration, while Leo it's all about James Bond's movies. Facilitating the creative process around their interests enables me to build a unique connection with each of my clients. I cannot overemphasize the importance of building a positive relational space. My goal is to create a nurturing and judgment-free environment where my clients can be their unique selves, to explore their potential and improve their skills. It is the setting, not the technical skills or digital modalities, that enables transformation. Two of my case studies that had been shut-ins for more than a year before I began working with them, then, over the course of four years engaged in digital arts therapy, they became ready to enter real-world interactions. Both eventually joined physical learning environments to continue developing their artistic talent and interpersonal skills. This transformation enabled people who experience significant social difficulties to progressively acquire confidence and trust in their own resources. Let's take a look at some of my findings. Diversity is important here, and I studied six fascinating ASD individuals with wide-ranging symptoms and severity. The effectiveness varied depending on the client, but each story is just as inspiring as the next. While there were certain similarities in the results, like substantial improvement in communication and social skills, each participant's outcome differed. For example, despite Phil's ability to communicate his needs in a basic monosyllabic way, he is mostly non-verbal. My work with Phil involved stimulating him with cognitive exercises of various natures, including the use of a digital tablet and painting. Specifically, the use of these apps and painting sessions demonstrated a positive effect on creative thinking, autonomy habits, recognition of emotions, and verbal and non-verbal communication. Robert is fine with expressing himself verbally, but struggles in social contexts. He also has a tendency to wander easily in his own associative patterns, sticking to objects of interest. Robert displayed enhanced focus and longer attention spans when working with digital technology during our sessions. Positively, he showed progress in motor function and non-verbal communication when working through dance and rhythm. Towards the middle of the spectrum, we have Sean and Ben, whose speech is congruent with the social context most of the time. However, they lack initiative and need step-by-step -step task guidance. Sean displayed progress in emotion recognition effectiveness. He also reduced his strong rigidity in terms of the types of activities he is willing to engage in. At the same time, he acquired basic knowledge of Photoshop to apply the fundamental tools in context. With Ben, the proposed exercises in Photoshop and Illustrator helped him develop creative self-confidence. Notably, Ben still generally needs to be guided through the creative process. However, there were two special pieces that he completed independently without help. And since it evidences creative freedom and autonomy, it needs to be celebrated. Two cases of ASD individuals who are high functioning on the spectrum have also been illustrated, Leo and Irene. Leo, who is extremely extroverted and loves to talk non-stop about his passions, experiences difficulties in social skills. This includes his struggle to regulate the amount of information he shares about his projects and check in whether the other person is interested. He displays limited reciprocity and finds himself misinterpreting humor, unable to read emotions or intentions properly. Leo improved both his technical and social skills. He has integrated new creative resources and puts them into practice with autonomy. Despite his social anxiety difficulties, he has progressively been able to share with new people and engage in different creative workshops outside of his home after several years of expressive arts therapy intervention. 
Finally, we have Irene, a talented visual thinker who goes to extraordinary lengths to avoid speaking. Irene evolved extremely well in her learning process when the creative projects were organized around her affinities. She gained a general foundation in digital painting, animation and 3D modeling. In addition, she displayed substantial progress in social communication skills when she felt safe. Although she still struggles with verbal interaction, I have seen her become gradually more communicative and share more confidently about her thought processes. Irene, like Leo, was also confined to her house pre-therapy. Four years later, she applied to a game art school program where she feels ready to develop her professional and social skills further. Despite our differences, each individual in my case studies shares social communication deficits, repetitive behaviors, and environment hypersensitivity. After engaging in digital arts therapy, each confirmed their willingness and appreciation for the creative work completed. I provided my clients tailored and patient-specific digital arts interventions. The levels of progress were highly viable, but the results indicate that all of the participants demonstrated noticeable improvements in social, cognitive and technical functioning. This therapy improved their genuine subjective well-being, noted by both their level of engagement and the stated preferences of the clients. Also, by opening a door to the ability to express themselves visually, Digital arts interventions furthered their communicative skills, self-esteem, and opened a long-lasting means of artistic self-expression. While digital arts interventions proved useful for all, technical capability was conditioned by the severity of their autism. Though their employment prospects are not guaranteed, for visual thinkers on the higher functioning end of the spectrum, the process has opened up a genuine chance for a meaningful professional career. As many high-functioning artists spend their lives unable to engage in professional activity, integrating this population into the workforce is valuable both to them and to society more broadly. Positively, for high-functioning visual thinkers, this potential career path was not limited by any prior experience. Both those with and without multimedia experience have a sincere chance of a professional career in this field. Moreover, even for those without realistic professional opportunities, this framework clearly helps people on the spectrum to improve their quality of life. People on the spectrum should be nurtured, supported and shown that they're valuable to society. My research shows that these people crave a sense of belonging and purpose. Based on the case studies in my thesis, combined with the observational data gathered through social skill group study sessions, I came to several conclusions. Firstly, patient-centric care is the most vital means of successfully engaging this population. This runs counter to one of the most dominant therapeutic practices with autistic people, applied behavioral analysis, focuses on breaking behaviors and forcing patients to adapt to a set of external standards. Ultimately, one of my main points is that if used, the ABA model as well as other approaches that are fundamentally therapist-led, should be combined with other adequate therapeutic methods that facilitate self-expression. For this, the success of an expressive arts therapy approach for ASD individuals relies on following their lead to the extent possible and building on their interests. This starts with a deep understanding of the client's fascinations or affinities rather than minimizing such mental fixations. This patient-centric approach harnesses their own obsessions, using that motivating force to develop pro-social behaviors, communication skills and technical competency. This brings us to the idea that in order to help an ASD person to change, it is perhaps necessary to change ourselves as therapists. Labeling someone as an individual with autism or any other condition risks neglecting the remarkably distinctive nature of each person and it irons out the specificities of people in the process of delivering standardized therapies. In my mind, this leads to the loss of humanity in therapy and while technical training has its place, encouraging ASD individuals to take initiative and following their lead is a paradigm for which this thesis provides strong supporting evidence. I also discovered the importance of reading each client's unique needs in a certain context. While unique attention is key, there is a common thread. 
all autistic clients must feel a sense of safety and confidence and an authentic attitude of unconditional acceptance. This is an incredibly effective way of guiding the client towards positive discovery and development. While this safe accepting context is a thread that runs through many therapeutic approaches, the interpersonal and communication difficulties of this population makes it even more vital and it requires greater sensitivity on the part of the therapist. I will mention several examples of the many indicators of sensitivities displayed here. Recognizing quickly if intervention isn't working and embracing a tailored change in direction. Emphasizing autonomy and continually but respectfully reinforcing their own capacity. Encouraging and supporting. The verbal and social limitations of the autistic population have too often led therapists to approach them on a purely behavioral basis, when in fact they are even more in need than the general population of a therapeutic language that embraces them. The arts offer a path to achieving more than what is achievable through a merely verbal therapeutic context. My four-year research journey has been eye-opening to say the least educating not only my ASD clients, but myself, on a rich range of topics, deepening my understanding as a therapist and as a human being. These experiences provide insights that will be useful to therapists working with individuals on the autistic spectrum, as well as those individuals otherwise touched by this condition. These eccentric minds have a lot to give and contribute to the economy and society in their own way, and we should develop and enhance their potential while helping them overcome challenges related to social skills, hypersensitivity and rigidity. Moreover, those with greater challenges deserve both our compassion and our empathy. We, as expressive arts therapists, can and should work to improve their well-being and their chances of self-actualization. Together, we can repaint the autism spectrum and make it a little brighter for everyone.